thoughts on the, 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 the shot, obviously? Unbelievable, man. I don't think people realize how tough of a shot that is. Uh, with the offhand, like even to have a chance, but that was that was that was it. I don't think people realize how tough that shot is. Have you ever seen a shot under those circumstances, like no, like that challenging like that? I don't think we'll see it either. That guy special. Two of them this year, one good and one bad. Strews. Oh yeah. As, as Kyrie was leaving his press conference, he, he made sure um, we told you that he thanks you for that three-pointer that you made before that. <laughs> no, no, no. That, that's about him, man. I, I mean, that shot is unbelievable, man. It's just, I couldn't believe it. I was there on the baseline. I, I just couldn't believe it. Yeah. You think people realize how much, I mean, you, obviously, but he also actually practiced some of those shots or similar shots? Yeah, I mean, I'm in practice, he's been doing that. Uh, but, you know, for the game winner, that's different. Anybody can try anything in practice, but for a game winner, that's just, it's different, man. You guys out rebounded Denver today, had more second chance points, offensive rebounds. How different did this game feel versus the last few times you played them? It was just great energy uh, from the start. Uh, we started the game great, but it was just great energy. Uh, 48 minutes, we were fighting for 48 minutes. And what does a win like this do for this team moving forward? I think that's a really big team, you know, going against Nuggets, which is they were champions last last year, and they have an amazing team. They had the MVP, uh, so it's it's tough to play against them. Uh, so it's a really big for us, big win. Can you imagine going through a game and not having a drink of water? Yeah, no, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do it. And just, by the way, hit the game-winning shot, too. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Impressive, man. Like I said, he's different, man. He's different. Uh, Let it go. Feel, feel good. <laughs> no, it felt good. Uh, it's a play that we work on uh, during shoot-around pretty often, so it felt good to execute and uh, had to trust in my teammates out there and um, – being lucky enough and fortunate enough to hit a left hand floater outside the kind of free throw line, I thought I got a little closer in the paint. But when I looked at it, I looked at it, at it after the game, and I was uh, pretty far out. But um, you know, shots that I work on, and uh, just being ambidextrous and being able to trust the the skills that I work on when no one's watching, and you know, fortunate enough to win in tonight. I mean, you you obviously work on your left a lot. How much do you work on your left in the mid range area? Yeah, pretty often, man. Pretty often. Sometimes I spend, you know, just an hour straight just working on straight left hand stuff. And, um, you know, being a small guard for a large part of, portion of my life, I consider myself a space out for now. But, um, you know, <laughs> you know, but just being a small guard, you just got to have a multitude of finishes. And that's something I've been working on since I was a kid. And we playing in the most athletic league in the world and, you know, full of athletes. So those guys uh, make up ground pretty quick. So just try to work on things that, uh, you know, defense is not really expecting. Can you take me through? It's obviously a split second decision, but just the decision to launch a lefty hook in that situation. Kind of take me through what you're seeing and thinking there. Yeah, man. Majority of it's instinctual and comes from preparation for hours, again, that no one sees. So I saw Jokic taking away kind of my pull up going left. I had hit a few, uh, or I had hit one or two tonight, so I knew that he was going to come up, but I didn't know he was going to commit like that. So he was forcing me inside the three-point line. Um, and as soon as I felt him kind of behind me, I was like, oh, I have my left hand. You know, it's wide open, so why not go to it? And I think that's kind of what happened, the way I saw it. You know, just instincts, man. Kid, kid said it was, you know, obviously a play with two different options. The was also an option. When, when did you realize, like, you were probably going to get the ball you know, did you have an expectation going in? Yeah, before the play happened, I, I pretty much had an expectation. Uh, I, I wouldn't have gotten that shot off without Luca tying the ball game. Um, he was unbelievable tonight and making a lot of clutch plays, getting to the free throw line. So I gave a lot of credit to him of getting us to that position and then allowing me to get that game winner at the end. It was just a full culmination of a team effort. But uh, that three that he hit to tie the game was just as huge as the game winner. And then just your perspective on, on this team, you guys have played twice in Denver, got beat in the paint, on the glass, all, all of these second chance points mm -hmm. come out with, with, you know, a, you know, new trade deadline acquisition players, yeah. uh, but 
but also just, you know, continuing to build this identity that you can, you know, play, you can bully, you know, a team that, that is usually the opposite. Like, what have you seen that this team is able to do? Uh, I feel like we match up with pretty much anybody well, uh, especially on the defensive end. Uh, we have the ability to switch one through five, and we also have a foundational defense that we've been going to uh, pretty much the whole season. And since I've got here, it's just gotten here. Um, yeah, I, I felt like we've just consistently worked on our communication and then also our trust that we have the intangible skill sets to be able to stop teams. And then we also have the skill sets offensively to – you know, dominate teams and really get out in transition and, and not so much playing half court in the ISO game and just watch me and Luca play. If we if we get a few fast break points and again if we score over fifteen fast break points, it's gonna be a long night for any team. So I feel like we're we're playing to our strengths and then when it gets tough and we face a little adversity throughout the game, we're able to slow the game down, throw it to the post or go to our, our um, you know our common plays. Before Luca missed the other night it- 17 in a row you guys have played together, which is the longest since you were traded here. How much does that help, and, and where do you feel like it? Looks good, right? <laughs> Looks good, right? Now that we got a sample size everybody could judge off of instead of, like, every other game. Yeah, no, it feels good to be able to play those cons- amount of consistent games and um, get a feel for one another and, and really show what we've been working on in practice, too. Uh, you know, we, we look, you guys don't get a chance to see all our practices. And, you know, when it's me and Luca playing against our, our second five, but we got a great chemistry. And when we got uh, guys making shots alongside of us, it makes the game uh, a lot easier. You've made a big shot or two before. Uh, but uh, something like this, in a season like this, when you, now you've had two games where it was pretty playoff intense, and you won one, lost a tough one. But how much does all this kind of combine to, to, to help the team moving forward? Yeah, I think I could say it after the game now. But, um, you know, before the game, you come in you know, to the arena and you know you're going against defending champs. You know it's going to be a tough one. And uh, we dropped last game and we're kind of fighting for this sixth spot, seventh spot, whatever it is. And it's on your mind. And uh, as a competitor, you want to play well, and especially in a high-intense environment. Uh, and I felt like we answered that call majority of the game. We made some mistakes um, throughout the game, which is going to happen. But I feel like we were very resilient. And uh, we have that mindset and mentality that we still have more work to do. And you know, we're not satisfied just with you know, going in and being competitive with some of the best teams in the in the West or in the league. We, we want to beat them. And same uh, mentality other teams have against us. And I think... We gave ourselves a chance to prove that tonight, and we were successful. So we just want to continue that moving forward. What do you see as a realistic ceiling for this team? Uh, I mean, championship is the ultimate goal. So that's what we're playing for. Kyrie, um, going on kind of your creativeness, it feels like every game, Mavs fans, team, see something new that we haven't seen before. Where do you get your creative drive from and getting new, new ideas? So many people probably get ideas from watching your games. Uh, what do you mean? Just who Where are you getting new ideas from to figure out all these different layout packages? Because <laughs> people look at you for inspiration usually when it comes to that. I mean, that's a great question. Uh, <sighs> or is there any? Is there is there anybody? <laughs> no, I, I like to say I'm a mix of all the greats that have come before me, and I've watched a ton of film on them, uh, and also the current players that are playing, and also the younger generation. I, I, I steal moves all the time, just like people steal moves from me. Um, it's just little tricks of the trade, you know, comes with being a professional and also approaching it like an amateur every single day as a student of your craft. And, you know, I'm never too great to learn something from someone else or I'm never too good to learn something from someone else. So I I just take that approach and I watch a ton of guys. I go home like, you know, right now I'll break my fast in like an hour or so and I'll just be sitting in front of my computer. My wife will bring me my food and my kids will be running in and out, but I'll be on YouTube for hours like I used to do when I was a kid and uh, just create that balance space where I could go home and, and get all that uh, competitive drive out, you know, because I, I do still have adrenaline after games. It's still very competitive. I'm, I'm trying to calm myself down right now, um, you know, even though the game ended like an hour and a half ago. Uh, but yeah, I just try to take uh, as many little tricks of the trade from people that are very successful and also those that are ascending in the on their journey. I know you've been asked this before, but speaking of that fast and Robin, and how, how difficult or not difficult is it playing like that and kind of just giving some light to that situation? Yeah, uh, man, uh, Ramadan is a special month, so it's a special time and yeah, it's just you try not to think about the suffering too much and, and really focus on the journey with God and the path that you're on and, and just stay focused on that and stay disciplined. It's it's a difficult journey. And 
um, you know, to be able to play 48 minutes uh, and, and not do it with having a drink or, or any food in my in my stomach uh, is nothing short of a miracle. So there's definitely a universal God out there that's protecting me, and I got to give credit to, to him. Sorry, this is kind of random, but Peyton Watson's a guy who's really come along for the Nuggets this year and developed. Yeah. You mentioned getting to play with you and some other NBA guys when he was back in high school. On his- what, what, did, what did Peyton say? Huh? What did Peyton say he- about that, that day? Uh, well, well, there were a couple days. He said that once he was able to beat you going back. And- I know he said that. That's what I'm saying. I was- <laughs> what did he say? I want to know exactly what he said verbatim. I don't, I don't have to. But you don't have to quote. He said the first time it wasn't quite like that, but he was kind of just starstruck to be in the room. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll tell you about Peyton, man. Uh, I walked into the gym. I'm like, who is this little kid right here that's, you know, towering over me, you know, and picking me up dang there, like above half court, and it was just pickup. Um, but uh, the crowd on the side, it was like a small gym, and they started getting into it, and me and Peyton were going at it for like eight straight possessions, and I will admit that he scored on me a few times, and um, we were going at it, and uh, that was kind of my telltale sign that he was going to be uh, a good player in this league for a long time. He had no fear. He didn't back down, and um, he got me better that day. Does anything stand out just about the enthusiasm and energy <laughs> that, that he plays with? Yeah, no, that, that's what I'm saying. You're on a random pickup day you're playing pickup on a Wednesday you're just trying to get better master your craft and here comes Peyton Watson trying to pick you up you know dang near three-quarter court uh so it gets your wheels going as a competitor but I'm, I'm grateful that he did that because uh it made me work harder for the rest of the summer just waiting for those young guys to kind of approach me in that manner and and um you know I, I've relished in those moments too you know going against guys that are taller bigger faster stronger and it only gets me better so Kurt, first of all um how are you doing after that celebration yeah, I'm good. I'm good, man. Uh, I was telling uh, my teammates that me and Keith were like underneath the crowd, like the the mob, that and, and just smiling because it was just so excited, man. Um, you know, we we always uh, kind of look at each other. All my teammates and I, we all lo- always look at each other when someone hits a left hand floater or a left hand shot, and especially me. So to have a game winner like that was pretty special. I don't take it for granted. Derek Lively said, "Mark Keith ran the fastest he's ever." <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. A couple of weeks ago, you said. We're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. Mm-hmm. This team has been five and two since that moment. What have you seen from this team that you would like to sustain moving forward? Uh, just that same mentality that you know, whether the game looks really good in the beginning or um, it's ugly to start off, or we're not hitting shots, or we're not on our defensive assignments, we have to build that resiliency and and also persevere through those tough times. We are learning through our adversity, like I said before, and um, our work is still not done. So we're not satisfied at all but we also understand that the position race is happening we don't have to keep talking about it but every single day um is a chance for us to get better and and enjoy the journey you know we're going to make shots sometimes and and blow teams out and other times we're going to be in some tough battles and we just got to be ready to to battle for full 48 minutes and live with the results after that no fear have you ever seen a shot that tough to win a game in this in this space that's uh that's probably uh i've seen a lot of great shots in practice and games on tv I think that one takes a cake. What, what, what's going through your head as, as you see him shooting it and then it's in the air? Um, in Kyrie, we trust. You know, as soon as we give him the ball, we know he's going to be able to make either he's going to find a, a great shot or he's going to make a great opportunity for someone else. So whenever we see him get the ball, we just sit back and just watch, watch it happen. And, you know, no one was expecting him to make that layup. No one was expecting him to take that floater, layup, whatever you want to call it. But amazing shot. And what's going through your head when it goes in? <laughs> Uh, honestly, I was surprised Markeith Morris sprinted off the bench faster than anybody. So, uh, you know, everybody was uh, everybody was static. You know, they were being able to just see that shot in that moment. It's amazing. It's exciting. And, you know, you don't get many chances or many feelings like that. Uh, how much of a confidence booster is a game like this one against Denver? Obviously, y'all have had an up-and-down season. Now you said it's seventh in the West, but obviously such a marquee win. How does this one translate towards the rest of the season? Um, we just got to build off it. You know, I feel like our defensive our defensive talk, our defensive discipline is definitely stepping up and stepping in the right direction. So we just got to be able to build off it. We got to be able to make sure we learn from our mistakes and get to the next one. You know, we're not going to be able to just sit here and be like, yeah, we won a game. They're a great team for sure, but – you know, there's other great teams out there. What were some of like the little things that you noticed defensively that were different today that haven't been maybe prevalent in some of the other ones? Uh, 
you know, there was definitely some times where we had to just change up what we were doing, you know, moving around who was guarding who, moving around how we were guarding things, how we were playing things throughout the entire game. It was just kind of figuring out what scheme was going to work at that time. And as soon as it stopped working, we want to change it again. What worked for you guys so well in the offensive class tonight? Um, you know, if the shot goes up, we got to be able to battle down low as bigs, you know, and there was definitely uh PJ had a big rebound tonight, you know, being able to know he had 11. No, wait. Yeah, he had 11. So being able to know that he was always coming in to help us rebound, you know, if uh, one of the big men was occupying Jokic, you know, everybody else was boxing out trying to get the rebound. You guys went to Denver a couple months ago and got outscored of the paint by 20, you know, obviously a completely different story. How different is this team? You know, with your development, with the with the additions in the in the trades, getting Maxi back, how different is it that you guys can only hit nine threes in a game like this and still win and still dominate? It really, just comes down to us building, uh, us having chemistry with one another and trusting one another. You know, being able to trust on switches, be able to trust on having low man, having the next man reel over or rotate, is uh, playing together with one another for this not even that long of a time, but being able to build as much trust is amazing. You very rarely see Joker have this poor of a shooting night. Why, why do you think you guys were able to contain him as well as you did? Um, You know, just being able to you think about that. We were just trying to throw a whole lot at him. You know, we were trying to make sure that he didn't feel comfortable. He didn't know what was coming. You know, we just try to be able to just throw a lot at, lot at him. And so he took a second for him to figure out what he was going to do, figure out what passes he was going to make. And as soon as we start seeing him getting comfortable, we were just changing things, trying to be able to make it more difficult on him. Kind of benefit was for y'all that PJ can pick up some of those uh, possessions against him. Amazing, you know, uh, strong, sturdy, and he's be uh, he, we talking to him. He's listening to us. He's talking back. You know, he's a great player, great defensive end. He was able to bring us energy yes. on the floor. Has be able to uh, transition to the offensive end. Now you and uh, Gaff to yeah, kind of occupy space. what you do. Yeah, kind of occupy space and being able to kind of play off Joker. Try to keep your eyes on him, but also making sure you keep an eye on the ball. And you had your um, Euro step dunk. Do you think that's something the Mavs fans can look forward to seeing more often? Was that a reactionary thing? Was that already planned? Uh, after that, uh, you know, I'm just being able to have Kyrie put the ball in that position. You know, he trusts me to finish the play, so I got to do it. Uh, it was kind of a reaction. It was kind of just if he's going that way, I'm gonna go the other way. So I've got to be able to just build off it. You know, I'm comfortable when I'm on the floor with my teammates. My teammates is comfortable giving me the ball. Derek, what, what, what part of your game um, would you say you have grown the most today compared to when you arrived in Dallas? I would definitely say understanding the game of basketball. You know, understanding uh, what the rotations, understanding uh, player personnel, who's good at what, who's bad at what, understanding where I need to be, understand that whenever someone is – playing one-on-one, -on -one. they're not looking at the defender. They're looking to see if anyone's behind him. So I'm trying to be able to make sure that I'm always in line of sight to make the ball handler kind of question if he's going to do that move or go somewhere else. Have you ever witnessed a more difficult game-winning shot than the one Kyrie just had? Have I? Um, probably not, um, but I've seen a lot. So, um, But when you say – opposite hand <laughs> understanding um, his left hand Kai is one of the best finishers in the league or or probably is going to go down as one of the best finishers ever um, and just his float game with the right left um, is just natural and uh, he delivered I thought Luca uh, put us in a position by tying it and then uh, Kai being able to uh, read the situation and get the ball I thought Maxi um, I don't know if he gets credit for two assists but um, to be able to get the ball in um, was big. So um, I thought the team stayed together. Um, Denver, the champs, they've seen everything. They came back. Um, but we got stops when we had to, and then we executed late game. I, I assume the play was drawn up for Kyrie. What was the conversation in the huddle? Yeah, it was, it was uh, actually for Maxi has two reads, um, both plays there, um, Luca and, and Kai. And Luca was open first on the first one to be able to catch and shoot, um, to be able to execute. We practiced this. Um, and then to be able to run the same play and have Kai come off the baseline. Um, we talked about it. We ran it in uh, Oklahoma City. Um, and so 
just to be able to execute and trust one another was was big this afternoon. Uh, speaking of execution and trust, the defense, especially the defensive help, was very noticeable. Was there a different conversation? Did you notice anything different out there? Why do you think the kind of the intensity on the defense side of the ball was so evident tonight, today? Well, I think when you um, they they heard, they executed the game plan. I think uh, just going into um, this afternoon, understanding um, Denver dominates the paint, and I think they only got thirty eight uh, this afternoon uh, with Joker and those guys. You know, Joker's ability to hit the ball in the paint and be able to pass to Gordon. Um, I thought Maxi. I thought PJ be, being able to put a four on uh, Joker and have our five. Uh, Rome and protect the rim. I thought uh, was big tonight with Gafford and uh, D Live. I thought those two did a really good job of executing the game plan, and then being able to rebound out of the out of that. Just you know, that's when you give uh, a free run to Gordon or these other guys on the perimeter. It can you know put you in a, a bad situation rebounding. But I thought again we did a great job of rebounding the ball. D Jones, uh, PJ, those guys being able to come back and rebound. What did you see? Uh and rebounding on um, the offensive glass and the second chance points when you guys had big numbers in those yeah. categories. Well, they were small, and I think we, we there was a carryover from our, you know, Oklahoma. You know, they're they're small too, and just being able to, I thought Gaff and those guys, PJ, um, D Jones, to be able to give us second or third opportunity. I thought Gaff and, and D Live kept the balls alive, and we came up with, uh, you know, second third opportunities and you can do that against a, a very talented team like Denver that gives you a chance. Jason, what, what does it show about the, your team that uh, games like this and even Thursday's loss uh, that you kind of handle? I mean, this was obviously playoff intensity in both of those games. I think uh, just this is a new group and we're, we're getting the opportunity to go through it in March. Um, you know, the, the intensity, um, being able to go on the road, like we were in Oklahoma City, that atmosphere, and then to come back home and have the atmosphere was a playoff type game. Um, understanding what's at stake, um, you know, every game means something. Uh, we protected home, but I thought just the execution um, coming together as a team at the right time. You can see that this afternoon is the trust and the chemistry is there. When uh, when Murray misses that little pull up there, you guys get the rebound. What, what's your level of confidence knowing you've got a few seconds left and? Uh, you know, two of the best clutch shot makers in the league. Uh, yeah, I think, um, I don't know where we rank, rank uh, in clutch, uh, but it's probably up there. Um, and then being able to have two of the best, uh, it starts with you know, the inbounds, being able to have someone who's conf confident to maybe hold it uh, long enough to get someone open or throw the perfect pass. As you saw, I thought he threw a great pass to Luca for a catch and shoot, which you normally don't get that, that opportunity. Um, but to be able to execute late is hopefully going to help us as, as the journey continues. Coach, with a game like this and with an ending like that and with a team like that, do you allow yourself to feel the emotions of a win like this? That's a great question. Um, I got to celebrate for about a minute on the court with those guys um, because, uh, you know, it, it's fun to win. It's hard to win in this league. Uh, but as coaches, uh, we have to turn the page quickly to get ready for our next journey, and that's to head down to San Antonio. So um, it was exciting to, to win. Um, it starts the week off right, yeah, but we understand what we have in front of us, and we can't have any letdown. So, yes, for a minute you get to celebrate. Um, I wasn't going to jump into the pile. Um, <laughs> thought about it. Uh, no, my luck, I would have missed and hit the floor. So uh, I thought I'd just sit, stand there and celebrate with those guys. But uh, a lot of fun. It should be fun. And, th and this time of the year, as you see in college, but also in the NBA, you can see the physicality. The playoff uh, basketball has, has arrived a little early. Um, and, I hope, and we're up for that challenge. And this should be fun.